Hey folks, Eric, you're the whatever guy because it really is whatever to me. And do you folks want to know about truly facing trouble for contamination concerns and political ploys? You guys stick around, man, and we'll talk about that. As you guys know, man, my name's Eric. I am the whatever guy. And we just shoot videos a couple days a week, basically keeping guys updated in the world. Delta 8, Delta 9, Delta 10, hemp cannabis is just wandering around. And today, man, sitting here on an early Wednesday morning bullshit with you guys. And finally, finally, we get some sort of resolution on figuring out like who is behind this bill in Florida that is basically going to cap uh the the hemp products you know they're basically trying to trying to make delta 8 illegal in the state of florida as you guys know i'm coming forward with another location in cantonment florida uh so i've been watching this bill very closely i know yesterday we've got another uh report probably to make tomorrow about the fact that that tc caps for recreational marijuana after it gets uh, uh legalized in the state of florida uh, there won't be any caps on the on the tc on the other side of that the same representative that's actually pushing uh this bill for the hemp bill is actually who was pushing that cap bill so that that bill got killed yesterday and this bill here is getting slowed down simply because uh you know there's a lot of stuff going on with charlotte's web there's a lot of people you know complaining about what's going on and now we find out that truly is behind who wants to kill delta in the state of florida like like i've told you many times before as we move towards recreational in these states what happens is is these mar these big marijuana operators are all going in the same direction they're not going to want you to get any relief from anybody but them and so they're going to basically try to kill the the, the minor cannabinoid space all the way around in every state that they come to and try to push rec the other interesting thing about this too is like the only minority equity you know, the only minority owned integrated facility applicant that we could find in the state of Florida or in the state of Alabama to give a license to was truly like they are the only minority owned uh, integrated facility applicant in the state of Alabama. Like they, they got the license and it's tied up in court right now. We found out that now the AMCC is actually teaming up with True Leave uh, to get these, you know, to try to force them into a position where we get to get these court cases over with so True Leave can get their license. It's a crazy situation. I mean, you know, I've asked this question many times on this channel. Like, are you telling me that the only minority owned, you know, integrated facility we could find to issue a license to in the state of Alabama was True Leave? Like, of all the shit that they got going on, like with all the legalization efforts they got going on, with all the money they had going on, and now we find out that they put their money basically behind the AMCC with these lawsuits because they are they are on the side of these lawsuits against these applicants over here that are pushing to get some sort of fairness on these integrated facility licenses. Now I do hear uh, some rumors up in the legislature. I've heard rumors that the legislature doesn't want to deal with this, and then I've also heard rumors that uh, you know that if the legislature uh, you know meets or uh, uh, comes to uh, some sort of agreement on this right here and changes the legislature, they would uh, expand those integrated facility licenses to sixteen. I'm not sure if that's true or not because like I said, that's just a rumor. But as it stands right now, we're going to flip over here to an article over here at this is over at Cali Ocho News. And let me just say this, too. Like, I didn't even know anything about this article uh, until Alan Sermon from over at Off City Labs brought this to my attention. So kudos to him. I appreciate him bringing this uh, article to me because, like I said, I don't I'm not a I'm not a I don't know anything about Cali Ocho News. But this is a really well read article. Uh, so we're going to take a look at it and see what it says. It says truly faces trouble for contamination concerns and political ploys. Let's scoot on down here. It says, are you a consumer concerned about the safety of your chemist products? Do you want to know about the shady connections between big corporations and politics in Florida? Buckle up as we dive into the alarming revelations surrounding True Leaf. In recent years, the cannabis industry has been booming, promising consumers relief and relaxation. However, amidst the growing popularity of cannabis products, concerns about safety and transparency is all, have also emerged. One company at the center of the controversy is True Leaf, a leading cannabis provider in the state of Florida. Reports have surfaced alleging that True Leaf's products may be contaminated with banned substances, including herbicides, pesticides, and non-flush PGRs, which is plant growth reg regulators, for those of you that don't know. These accusations have raised serious questions about product quality and control and consumer safety. What happens when consumer reports mysteriously vanish? In Florida, True Leaf is facing accusations of deleting consumer complaints regarding their products, which allegedly contain banned substances like herbicides, pesticides, and non-flush GPRs. This raises serious questions about the product safety and transparency. Despite these alarming claims, the Department of Agriculture and True Leaf seem to be joining forces aiming to criminalize all hemp products in Florida. This collusion between a corporation and a government agency is troubling and demands scrutiny. The implications of these actions are far reaching, affecting not only consumers, but also the integrity of the cannabis industry as a whole. The apparent cover up of consumer complaints raises questions about corporate accountability and regulatory oversight. <clears throat> it is imperative that consumers are informed and empowered to make choices that prioritize their health and well being. Ever heard of Bellamy Brothers? The country music legends aren't just making headlines for their tunes, they're also entangled in True Leaves' web of influence. 
It's been revealed that Florida's Agricultural Commissioner, Wilton Simpson, used taxpayer dollars to hire the Bellamy Brothers for a performance in Tallahassee, conveniently boosting Truly's brand. What's more, the Bellamy Brothers are spearheading Truly's legalization ballot initiative, which, if passed, would monopolize the cannabis market, favoring corporate giants like Monsanto. The intertwining of politics and business interests is a cause for concern as it threatens fair competition and consumer choice. The use of taxpayer funds to promote a specific company's agenda raises ethical questions about government transparency and accountability. It, under it undermines the public's trust in the government ability to impartially serve its citizens' interests. Furthermore, the close relationship between Trulieve and the political figures highlights the need for stronger relations to prevent undue influence and protect the, undue influence and protect the integrity of the, of the democratic process. While Trulieve presents itself as a trusted provider of cannabis products, the reality may be far from what meets the eye. Reports suggest that they are involved in deceptive marketing tactics, misleading consumers about the safety and quality of their products. By deleting hundreds of consumer complaints and collaborating, collaborating with government officials to push their agenda, Trulieve is prioritizing profit over the well-being of its consumers. This blatant disregard for consumer concerns is unacceptable and underscores the urgent need for greater accountability and transparency within the cannabis industry. Join us in, in demanding transparency and accountability for Trulieve and Florida's Department of Agriculture. Say no to contaminated products and, and political manipulation. Subscribe to Cali Ocho News. Guys, this is a crazy situation right here. You know, all this time I've been trying to figure out, like, who was behind, you know, pushing this. I, I had suspected all the time that True Leave uh, was involved in this. Obviously, they're pretty much involved in every fucking thing that's going on. I mean, I mean, again, I, you know, I asked the question, is True Leave really the only minority owned company that we could find? You know, the only minority owned people that we could find in Florida and Alabama to give a integrated license to like we already have done uh, news articles on this channel before about other people that were well qualified in the integrated space that were minorities that could have pushed forward that were but long time Alabama residents people from Alabama that could have but you know could have benefited from this integrated license if they hadn't went forward but now as it stands we're tied up in legal battles all the way through and we find out that the AMCC and True Leave have basically teamed up now so basically True Leave has teamed up with the government in Florida and now they've teamed up with basically the government in Alabama to push the, the agenda the way they wanted to go all right folks is whatever guys signing off and like I said thank you for Alan Summer for bringing this uh, news article to me and I will holler at you guys tomorrow man love it see ya